I'm so glad to see all of you this morning. I miss all of you. Um, I like online learning and I like online worship and doing things from home, but I, I kind of need some some face-to-face, -face, some, some church stuff to go on. I miss that and I miss y'all. And so I appreciate you um, working with it with me and we all working together to get get the ball ro rolling and just adjust to this this new phase and this new season for a moment. Our call to worship this morning is we gather as a community of faith in God's subversive world. We gather to celebrate that no darkness can extinguish light and to remember that love will always be more powerful than death and to trust that peace will always be stronger than violence. And so we gather today as a people of faith in the light of God's world. Welcome to our worship service. Our scripture this morning, um, well, let me go back, let me go back to our, before we do our scripture, let us pray together. Dear God, we thank you, we bless you, we magnify your holy name for you are good and your mercy is everlasting. You have brought us safely through two and three weeks of COVID-19 and wearing masks and wearing gloves and protecting ourselves and isolating ourselves. And even in our isolation, God, and even in, in the protection that we have put over us to cover us, God, we know that you have also covered us in great ways. You have covered us with your love. You have covered us with your grace. You've covered us with your provision. God, you have covered us in so many ways, and we thank you. Now, God, in the name of Jesus, as we participate in this worship service, continue to cover us, bless us, give us what we need in the name of Jesus. Bless our children, God, as they work through the virtual learning and, and, and bless our elderly who are not able to get out and do what they need to do. Give them what they need in the name of Jesus. Bless us and continue to guide us. In your name we pray, amen. Amen. Now our scripture comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 12 through 30, excuse me, verses 12 through 26. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 12 through 26. And the word of the Lord reads, for just as the body is one and has many members and all the members of the body, though many are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit, we were all baptized into one body. Jews are Greeks, slaves are free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot were to say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear were to say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were, were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them, as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many, many members, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor, again, the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the members of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And those members of the body that we think less honorable, we clothe with great honor. And our less respectable members are treated with greater respect. Whereas our more respectable members do not need this, but God has so arranged the body, giving the greater honor to the inferior members that there may be no dissension within the body, 
but the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together with it. If one member is honored, all rejoice together with it. The word of God for the people of God, thanks be to God. I'd like to use for our key verse this morning, verse 26, and that, uh, and I'll read that verse again. If one member suffers, all suffer together with it. If one member is honored, all rejoice together with it. And so based on this key verse, I'd like to bring to your attention the subject, we are all in this together. We are all in this together. Some of you might remember the song. Um, I grew up with the song, but it's a song that's much older than me, that the knee bone is connected to the thigh bone and the thigh bone is connected to the hip bone. The hip bone is connected to the, and it goes so on and so on and so forth. And so that song might be familiar to many of you and bring back some really, really good memory memories. But remembering this song is appropriate in getting us to the punchline this morning in that we are all in this together. The song comes from an era of romantic songs and bobby socks, and some of y'all might remember bobby socks. But there's also an African-American spiritual based on the book of Ezekiel called Them Bones. And some of you might remember that song, them bones, them bones, them dry bones. And one might be tempted to end the phrase with, and they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. It sounds silly, but it's not too far off from what the Apostle Paul was writing to the church of Corinth. The body is one, and it has many members, feet and eyes and ears and hands and a head. Paul instructs us about anatomy. The members of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable like toes. And if you have ever broken a toe, a toe might be, you know, one of those things that's not needed. But if you have ever broken a toe or just even stubbed a toe, which is a fairly common experience, you'll know how smashing one of these tiny appendages can be felt throughout your entire body and alter your whole view of the world instantly. And so Paul, knowing this, writes, if one member of the body suffers, all together with it suffer. Just like if one of your toes gets smashed, it's like your whole body suffers because you feel it throughout the whole body. And so Paul is writing to a badly divided and confused group of folks in Corinth. This is the local church of Paul's ministry. The congregation was disturbed by doubts and suspicions. Relationships were confused and feelings hurt. And there were struggles for power and competing factions. And all of this was in a richly gifted community that proclaimed that Jesus is their Lord. If we read deeper into the letters to the Corinthian church, it begins to sound like several toes were smashed and an arm broken and a couple of ribs sore and bruised perhaps a kidney punctured for good measure. And, and one of the points that Paul makes about Christian responsibility is that this kind of hurtful contention gives the church, the capital C church, a black eye. Indeed, Paul says, the body does not consist of one member, but of many. And so if one member suffers, all suffer together with it. The most obvious Christian community is the gathered congregation. And of course, we are gathered online today. All of us are here together and all of us have struggles for power. But we have to ask ourselves, are, are, are there angers that, that work hurt? Are we, are we angry and is that working hurt rather than healing? Are there members to which Paul refers as weaker or less honorable who are strengthened and give a place of honor in this community? What about the people with smashed toes? Are they bound up? Are we binding them up with healing? 
and as an arm offered to help the body stand. Our lesson today is about healing. It's about healing, it's about getting along, it's about common good. In the modern vernacular, one might say that Paul was urging the Corinthians to recall that we are all in this together, that we're not alone, that we're not by ourselves, that we're not doing this by ourselves, that we are all in it together, that we're all family, that we, if we're not biological family, we're spiritual family, and we're helping each other through this thing. In short, we also need each other. Of course, relatedness is a hard concept for human beings because we started out just fine in the Garden of Eden. We were relating just fine. We had man and woman. We had humanity and animals, the created order and God, and we lived in harmony. But that early Eden of cooperative dependence of joyful relationship was broken and even today on a good day it's a struggle to imagine what it must have been like so close to each other and so close to god because we're all so disconnected these days even if as we try to imagine today the key point is it's all about experiencing god among us and it's about finding god in the here and in the now. It is about recognize, recognizing that God isn't just out there and far away and untouchable, that God is here. God is here with us. And that we are here with each other as God's vessels and God's instruments and working God's kingdom building. God is here and God is present with us. And we meet God and the humanity of Jesus, and we also meet God in the humanity of each other. We have to be careful many times because some of the language in our worship services and in our songs as we worship God suggests that God is indeed far, far away and unavailable to us. And so there's a real sense that God is out there and God is uninvolved and not among us all, but but the, what is the message that we need to know and what we need to recognize today is that, and that we celebrate and have to learn is that Emmanuel, the God who is with us, our prayer that God be with us has been answered. God is with us. And so then even in that, as we add that layer, Paul talked about the body of Christ that not only do we need God to be with us, but we need each other for wholeness and health in the body. Now, right now we're in a world that's a little off balance. Of course, we have violence of all kinds that is so normal that it doesn't even capture our attention on the evening news. We have COVID-19 that is isolating us and self, sep uh, separating us in so many ways. Our elected officials seem all to be cross purposes with those who they are elected to serve. Relationships are fraught with marriages broken and children ignored and friends too busy to catch up with each other and our elderly are lonely. What happened? How do we find our way back into a sense of community and of shared purpose and of goals and striving for the good of the whole. We have to understand Paul's teaching that every member of the body is crucial. Whether the body is a marriage, a family, a congregation, a neighborhood, a city, a country, or the world, every member of the body is crucial. This is true for every person. And because it is so linked to the bedrock of our faith, Jesus, it is especially true for us as Christian believers that we are all members of one body linked together inextricably, whether we like it or not. Jesus brought us freedom and vision and salvation and said that he brought it for all of us, for everyone, for the big players, and for the inferior part. 
And this is not an option. It is a necessity. And so Jesus teaches that the larger, uh, the larger family of God shares the responsibility of caring one for the other. And even in this season, Jesus reminds us that he is with us. He has never left us. He has not forsaken us. It doesn't feel good that we're going through this right now, but God is with us. And it takes the Apostle Paul to remind us this in this morning's lesson that not one of us is never alone. We have each other. I have you. You have me. And we have God. And we are to live as such in balance and complexity and in harmony. And that we can find both tremendous comfort as well as great responsibility for action, even in this time. For we are all connected. The, the hip bone is connected to the thigh bone. The thigh bone connected to the leg bone. The leg bone connected to the ankle bone. We're all connected and a part of this body, the body of Christ. And we are called to love each other. We are called to, to, even if we don't like each other, love each other through some things and help each other through this season and other since season in our lives. For we know that we are Christians, that we are all God's children, and we are known by our love. Let us pray. Holy God, you are a mystery, greater than our minds can even comprehend. And yet you have come to us in Jesus and he invites us to stay with him, to follow where he leads so that we may find you whom our hearts seek. We come, but we bring with us our doubts, our questions, our frailties, our inability to love one another well sometimes. We come hesitant, yet drawn by your haunting love. Immerse us in the waters of your grace, God. Pour your Holy Spirit upon us and teach us how to love one another with the love of Christ. For we ask it in the many names of Jesus, our Lord, that you be with us and help us to love the folks we don't even like. Help us to help those who we feel are unhelpable, could, cannot be helped. God, help us to be connected to those who we don't even want to fool with, but we are called to love. We ask this in the many names of Jesus, our Lord, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, the Son of God, our teacher, our Savior, and the one whose love surrounds us all the days of our lives. And we say, amen. Amen. Thank you all for joining me for this message this morning. What I want to do is I do want to offer you an invitation this morning. Because when you're in close quarters and you can't go to work and you can't go here, there, and everywhere, and you with family members and all friends and different people, then it gets frustrating. And old stuff comes up. Old things pop up that you don't want to talk about or you hadn't want to talk about wanted to talk about in years, but it's there. And so I want to invite you this morning that if you are having issues and trouble, if you are going through even just the anxiety and stress of this season, I want you to invite and I want to invite you to either come for prayer. And you can come for prayer by posting on our prayer wall or just inboxing me. I want to invite you, if you have not received Jesus as your personal Savior, yeah, you know him and you come to church and you know God, but you don't have a relationship with God. I invite you to inbox me. And let's me and you talk about that relationship. If you are not a member of St. Luke and you are joining us on Facebook Live, I invite you to just to if you if you need a church family, then we're here for you. We're all connected and we all love each other and we're, we're not perfect, but we work things out with each other and try our best to help each other grow. 
I invite you to join St. Luke. And so if you are in need of prayer, if you are in need of a relationship with Christ, if you uh, need a church family, I invite you to inbox me or call me, okay? Inbox me, I'll send you my number and we can talk by phone. Amen.